What's up everyone, welcome back to Quest Mode. Today I want to look at a game that I think should be getting way more attention. It's called Time Spinner and it's been on the PS4, Vita and PC for about 9 months now and it just released for the Switch. I've beaten the game and if this looks like something you'd be interested in, it's absolutely worth your time. This is yet another Metroidvania but stick with me because a few things set Time Spinner apart. First, if you're interested in gaming history or how the term Metroidvania became a thing, this is one you've got to play. It emulates the exploration and RPG elements of Castlevania Symphony of the Night better than any game I can remember. And as you probably know, Symphony of the Night is the Vania in Metroidvania. Plus, Time Spinner mixes all that with time travel. So pretty cool stuff. The game starts out nice and quiet, but soon the evil emperor destroys your village and it's up to you to travel back in time to stop the empire before it's even begun. Soon enough, you're traversing the millennia, which immediately opens up two maps to explore. One for the past and one for the present. If that sounds like the second half of The Messenger, it is, but believe it or not, the dual map idea is executed much more gracefully in this game. Fighting words I know, but Time Spinner features a better fast travel system, didn't require any tedious backtracking, and I never wondered if I was on the right track. I could explore the past or the present at my own pace, and I always found myself right where I needed to be to find the next item, upgrade, or ability. That's exactly how these games should play. And speaking of abilities, every Metroidvania has them, and in Time Spinner, the most useful is your power to freeze time, which comes in handy for both exploration and combat. That said, there is one aspect of the time traveling mechanic that could have been a little better. In some instances, the game did a poor job of explaining how actions in the past might impact the future. For example, it might be unclear that defeating a boss on one map will unlock a gate in the other. But this is a minor complaint because like I said, the fantastic level design always led me down the right path. Plus, the thrill of jumping between time frames is mostly about discovering new abilities and items in one map that I could use to access certain areas in the other. Next up, I want to talk about the RPG mechanics. I've heard some people ask why Symphony of the Night gets half the credit for inventing a genre that, on its surface, seems more like Metroid and less like Castlevania. But it was Symphony of the Night that so elegantly introduced RPG elements like inventory management and character building. It's these mechanics that make Time Spinner so difficult to put down. You'll gain experience from slaying monsters and you'll find armor and trinkets that boost your stats. Pretty standard RPG stuff. But then there's the weapon system which is totally unique. You find magic orbs that serve as your base weapons. Right from the start you can equip two orbs at once, each with totally different melee and elemental abilities. It took a while to get used to, but I eventually found combinations that perfectly suited my playstyle. My favorite was the lightning orb, which shocks enemies from a distance, combined with either a fire or sword attack for close range. Orbs level up the more you use them, so once you find a combo you like, it gets more powerful the more you use it. You can also craft consumables and accessories to further strengthen your hero. It's a great RPG mix that provides the perfect amount of depth for a game of this size and breadth. One of my favorite parts of Time Spinner that gives it even more of an RPG slant are its 20 or so optional quests. They're usually simple, fetching a certain number of items or slaying a certain number of monsters, but they all felt meaningful for two reasons. One, they provided valuable experience which made the task of leveling up much less of a grind. In fact, leveling in Time Spinner never felt tedious. Second, the characters that assign each quest usually had motivations that were complex and interesting. Completing them all was addictive and it caused me to care more about my friends and feel more invested in the world. For completionists or players who just want even more story, there's also a set of collectible journal entries, memories, and data downloads scattered throughout the game's two maps. Finding them all is fun on its own, but reading them reveals a rich, if complicated, backstory. As for the main story, it can also get convoluted at times, but I was happy that it didn't shy away from some pretty mature themes. This is no fairy tale. It features specific arcs that focus on revenge, personal redemption, and even sexuality. I applaud the writers for adding unexpected weight and texture to a game that could have easily survived without it. There are more surprises to the story, particularly for the most thorough of explorers, but saying any more would risk spoiling some of the more interesting parts of the game. Finally, Time Spinner does include a new game plus mode. 
I'm normally not a fan, but I feel compelled to revisit Time Spinner not only because it's a great game, but because I know there were a few things I didn't experience on my first playthrough, and I'd love to uncover absolutely everything this game has to offer. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and watch some of my other Switch-related content. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you never want to miss any of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. Until soon, we'll see you next time.